Warning for manga spoilers. Alright, so Monster 9 has just managed to escape Kafka by the skin of his teeth. With the enemy Kaiju gone, Kafka decides to flee as well. He jumps high up into the air. While in the air, Kafka sees that both Leno and Iharu are safe and that they are getting medical treatment right away. Kafka knew that he had done his part and made his escape through the nearby alleyways, intending to revert back to his human form. However, someone suddenly appeared behind him, checking his features again. Hoshina felt relieved to see Monster 8 and grabbed his blades. This shocked Kafka, who realized that Hoshina had set out to hunt Monster 8, which was Kafka himself. Hoshina then informed the others that he had been in District F and had made contact with Monster 8. This sudden update surprised Leno, Kikoru, and Mina. Hoshina misunderstood that Kafka had attacked his team members. Kikoru was surprised to learn that Hoshina was the only one on the subjugation team. Leno wanted to tell Hoshina that the kaiju in front of him was Kafka. Suddenly, Kafka noticed a blade aiming for his neck but swiftly dodged it. He realized its speed was remarkable. Hoshina kept slashing and Kafka could only evade. As the fight went on, Kafka remembered how confident Hoshina was when fighting small to medium-sized kaijus. He understood it wasn't just talk. Hoshina was truly experienced in battling smaller monsters. Hoshina grumbled about Kafka's agility, mentioning he should have landed a hit or two by now. Kafka felt fear creeping in as the usually cheerful vice captain now stood before him as a ruthless hunter intent on killing monsters. Hoshina then received permission from the operators to remove his limiter, activating his 92% released force. He declared his intention to subdue Monster 8. Upon hearing their vice captain's declaration, Lino and Kikaru felt anxious. Kafka then assumed a fighting stance, but suddenly remembered how his punch had torn the other humanoid kaiju apart. He worried that he might repeat the same with Hoshina. However, his worries were interrupted as Hoshina literally cut him down in that moment. Kafka was left speechless. Hoshina was perched on a nearby pole like a ninja, looking pleased that his blade had pierced through. Seeing Hoshina poised for another attack, Kafka realized he couldn't outmatch the vice captain by holding back. The Defense Force's suit was an organic weapon made by incorporating muscle fibers and cells from monsters. The more force one released, the more they could synchronize with the suit and unleash its power. Kafka had already found it unbelievable after witnessing Kikoru, but Hoshina was on a whole other level. As he dodged and ran, Kafka realized that Hoshina's movements were not human-like. The attacks were swift, and Kafka's defenses couldn't keep up. He realized that Hoshina was much faster compared to the humanoid kaiju. All of a sudden, Hoshina had used his family's sword arts, employing their first form, known as the Empty Strike. The attack effortlessly sliced through Kafka's left hand, as if it were cutting through butter. Kafka was certain he had dodged the attack, and began to wonder if an invisible blade had struck him. His chest was also grazed, revealing its core to Hoshina's discerning eyes. Kafka then swiftly regenerated his severed limb and the grazed area on his chest. It dawned on him that he was no longer entirely human. However, he realized that regeneration consumed a considerable amount of energy. He understood that it would be unwise to continue absorbing more hits. Hoshina kept attacking with his slashes, but Kafka managed to block them using his toughened fist. Kafka then took a risk. Hoshina wondered what was going on with the creature in front of him. Despite his best efforts, his blades were consistently dodged and their paths were altered. He realized that Monster 8 was probably a Mega Monster with a fortitude rating above 8.0. Despite feeling uneasy during the fight, Hoshina was determined to finish it, pushing himself to his limits in one final effort. Hoshina had used his blade cutting technique, fifth form, and unleashed a dual strike of invisible blades. The attack had cut off Kafka's left leg, causing his balance to become unstable. However, that wasn't the end of it. Hoshina had gone for a follow-up attack, the Mist Strike, composed of three attacks in total. He had aimed for Kafka's core, confident that the fight was over, but to his shock, his blade had been bitten by a mouth on Kafka's body, rendering it immovable. Kafka had acknowledged the danger and power of the attack, but he knew that Hoshina would target his core. In response, Kafka swung his fist, aiming to break the blade. The impact had pushed Hoshina back, and he had clicked his tongue in frustration. By the time Hoshina had looked around, Kafka had vanished from the streets. Hoshina had scratched his head in puzzlement and reported that Monster 8 had escaped. He later reported that Monster 8's severed limb had also disappeared, leaving no sample for them to collect. The operators confirmed that an investigation team had been dispatched. Kikaru listened to the communications as she remembered seeing Kafka transform into a kaiju in person. She wondered if she had continued to trust the old man. Suddenly, something clattered behind her, causing Kikoru to become alert. 
However, it was only Kafka returning from the fight with Hoshina. Kikoru looked relieved to see him well. Kafka apologized for making her worry. Blushing, Kikoru exclaimed that she hadn't been worried at all and claimed that she had wanted to say a lot of things. Kafka suddenly wobbled and Kikoru quickly moved to help him get up. Kafka apologized for letting the kaiju that had hurt her escape. Kikoru was surprised and then began to act like a sundere again while stating that she would one day kill the kaiju herself. At that moment, Kafka attempted to walk away, but Kikoru questioned him about his destination. He explained that he needed to check on Leno and Iharu because they had been badly injured. However, Kikoru stopped him, saying he wouldn't be of much help there. She reassured him that the two would recover fine, thanks to the Defense Force's use of monster recovery powers combined with medical technology. She spoke from her own experience, assuring him it would be effective. Kafka felt disheartened to be lectured by a teenager, given his middle-aged status. Kikoru then advised him to focus on his own situation first, as he had been discovered by the troop members and on top of that, by their vice captain. She speculated that someone like Hoshina might soon figure something out. Hoshina had sat on the ground, feeling disappointed, while Mina approached him, curious about Monster 8's strength. Hoshina couldn't believe Mina had witnessed his embarrassing moment and had even taken a picture to remember it by. He then admitted that Monster 8 might have been a mega monster, which would have been the first since the one in Fukuoka five years ago. Thankfully, Monster 8 hadn't caused any casualties in the past few months and seemed to be the type that didn't attack people indiscriminately. Reflecting on the fight, Hoshina remembered feeling uneasy. He wondered why Monster 8 had targeted the weapon instead of him. He also recalled Monster 8's movements during the fight and realized that it seemed to be fighting like a human rather than a monster. Mina stopped her overthinking by declaring that she would take charge of the area and suggesting that Hoshina should rest. She reminded him that all types of monsters were meant to be defeated. Hoshina agreed but suddenly his communication device went off and Ikaruga's voice echoed from his earpiece. Hoshina wondered what was happening and Ikaruga exclaimed that he had received some information from Lino and Iharu. They reported that the humanoid kaiju that had attacked them was the same one they had examined earlier and confirmed that it had been human before transforming into a monster. With those words, Hoshina realized that these monsters could take on human forms. Alright, so I know that this fight was pretty short. However, I felt that this was a fight that deserved a video of its own, so I just had to make it on. And this fight was just a small fragment of the Sagamihara subjugation operation arc. So if you want to watch the full arc, then don't fear, as I will be uploading a video covering the arc in just a couple of days. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Anyway, have a great day, and bye.